framework of the add-on mouse brain for data integration and discovery. Whoa. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Okay, so um, that's the Allen Institute for Brain Science. Our mission is to accelerate the understanding of brain using the big science approach and generating uh, useful public resources. Uh, in our current 10-year plan, uh, our uh, aim is to more deeply understand how the brain works with an initial focus on the visual system. So we are trying to find out how the visual information is represented and analyzed by the neurons and how we uh, perceive this information to make the decisions. So to su uh, support this effort, we are generating various type of data sets. So how to integrate this uh, multi-skill and uh, multi-modality data sets, it's a challenge by its, itself. So one of the good way to uh, organize this kind of data is that we can uh, define a standard coordinates of space and we register or attach every data to that space. So by doing this, uh, first we are going to have the uh, standard uh, consistent representation of the metadata. And uh, secondly, and more importantly, once this is done, we're going to be able to uh, compile and analysis the difference from different uh, uh, subjects or even from different modalities. So this is the reason why in 2005, we built our first version co uh, common coordinate framework. That version was built, uh, was based on one single specimen using the nasal staining. Uh, and uh, the th second major revision was in 2011. Uh, at that time, we, uh, we made the uh, atlas symmetric and added more deeper label uh, annotation structures to it. And the major uh, motivation uh, that drive us to do the version three uh, is because, as you can see, that nasal-based atlas is not really smooth in 3D due to the um, distortion introduced during the sectioning, staining, and the tissue transportation. So this time, we decided to move to a new modality. That is the uh, serial two-photon imaging. It's a block face image, uh, block face system, which means that uh, the block face is going to be imaged instead of the thin section cut it from the brain. So this will assure us a really smooth 3D volume by just uh, standing together the 2D coronal sections. However, uh, other than the uh, 3D smoothness, there's another one more uh, property we really want the average template to have, that is, we want the template to be as generic as possible. However, each brain is unique in its shape. And also due to the imaging process, the artifacts or even the tissue damage will introduce even more uniqueness to that brain. So if you just choose one brain as a template and register all other brains to that template, that will introduce a strong bias to, toward that brain you just selected. So in order to avoid this, uh, this time, in, instead of using just one brain, we build our uh, average template based on a population of, a, of a 1,675 brains. So we, so we start our atlas construction by using the version two atlas as the initial template. So then we register all the other brains to that template using the affine registration first. And uh, after each iteration, after the registration is done, we, uh, we do the average of the warped image to get uh, the average template for the next iteration. And uh, we repeat doing this until there is a little change of that template. And then we introduce the uh, deformable registration. So when the whole algorithm converged, what we have is, act, uh, is such an average template with the average shape and average intensity. So if you compare this template to any of the brain in the population on the left side, you can see that first, for some unique features, it's no longer readable in the average template, which is good, actually. 
And on, that, on the other hand, for other features, which is a common feature shared by most of the brain in the population, they have actually been greatly enhanced. For example, the barrel fields and the barrel in the in the brain stem. Okay, so this two uh, video shows you the precise of how this algorithm converged. So another very interesting example is, is that we also apply the same algorithm to the batch photo of our, our at institute. So as you can see, um, on both sides, the image start from the very fuzzy initial image and become more and more clear. And for that face, uh, actually, it's a unisex face, uh, blends a man and a woman. So I cannot say it's, uh, it's handsome or it's, it's beautiful, but uh, it's a charming face. And this two video, OK, it, it start. OK, this two video um, shows you more details of the template we obtained after this uh, algorithm. So as you can see, the average template we have is a really clean and beautiful and a full of uh, anatomical detailed information. Okay. So another infrastructure we build on top of the CCF is the so-called cortical coordinates because uh, a lot of effort will be focused on the cortex. So the ability to integrate in the information from different layers is very crucial. Uh, this also means we have to take into account the curvature of the cortex. So we use the Laplacian equation to generate the equipotential field uh, between the pi and the wet, uh, wet mat surface, which is shown as a color rainbow in figure A. And the streamline you see in figure B and C is generated by going along the gradient di uh, direction of that potential field. So with these streamlines, we now have the ability to carry information from, the, from different layers to the, to the surface of the CCF. For example, if, if we do a, a maximum intensity projection, so from the top of the CCF, we can clearly see the different patches of the somatosensory as well as uh, uh, primary visual and uh, auditory uh, areas. So uh, the data annotation is another very, impo very important aspect of the CCF. Uh, currently, we are, uh, we are in the first year of the four-year plan to do the annotation of the whole atlas. Um, for each uh, structure, the annotation is led by our uh, neural anatomist. They're using not only just the information from the average templates, but also they use some other supplementary information, such as the gene expression and uh, the connectivity uh, information to determine the boundary. And uh, till now, we have 178 uh, structures annotated. And when it's completed in 2017, we are going to have uh, 300 green matter structures and the cortical layers plus another uh, 80 fiber tracks. So next, I'm going to use the Island Mouse Brain Connectivity Atlas as an example to show you how we use the CCF as an uh, information hub to do the data integration and uh, representation. So the aim of the uh, Connection Atlas is trying to provide a useful public resources to understand how the brain how the neurons are connected in the brain. So this is achieved by the uh, stereotactic injections of a certain virus into the, into the brain. And uh, then the population of the neurons get affected, infected to that virus will express a green fluorescence protein. So we then uh, sacrifice the mouse and uh, do the whole brain imaging to get the uh, volume information about that injection site. So this is a standard output from one experiment. It uh, consists of uh, 140 uh, coronal sections. Each of that is uh, 40K by 30K. So the 
total atlas consists of uh, about uh, uh, 2,000 experiments, that is one false million uh, image and one petabyte of data. So we built an automatic pipeline to uh, convert each of the RGB pixels into biological meaningful information. So the, uh, the backbone of this pipeline is a series of uh, informatics modules. Um, the pre-processing module gets the image ready for analysis and display, and the detection module segments the, uh, the signal from the background, and the registration module transforms each data into the CCF. And the grading module, we grade the data into different resolutions. And the last module is the unionization module, since uh, all the data has been registered to CCF. So we can sum up the exper uh, experimental result with, re re with regard to each anatomical regions. And also because we have uh, registered all the data to the CCF, uh, we can display all the injection sites in such one single image and use, this, use it as the navigation of our, our web app. Um, here, each dot represents one experiment. The size and the location of, the, of that dot is decided by the size and location of the injection. So uh, the user can collect, click any dots, and that will bring the user the 2D original image and a 3D summary and a, and a 3D summary of that experiment. And if the user decides to dive in into more details uh, of one experiment, we also provide uh, these, uh, these uh, quantitative readouts of the projection signal to each of the anatomical regions. And uh, because we have registered all the data to the CCF, we also provide another very useful tool. It's called the spatial search to the users. For the spatial search, uh, the users can click anywhere on the left side uh, uh, atlas to select a target voxel. Now, once that uh, voxel is selected, then, then all the experiments have signal projected to that target voxel will be listed on the right side of the page. Uh, and the streamlines you see here is actually the, the link between the injection site and that, uh, and, uh, and that uh, target voxel. So this is um, effectively a an, an virtual ritual grade map. So using this uh, spatial search, we can do something even more interesting. For example, uh, this is the topography of the cortical to subcortical uh, projections. The top is a visualization of about uh, 80 injection sites through the brain, and we color uh, we color coded it according to its location. And the middle and the bottom image is generated by doing the spatial search repeatedly within the isocortex, striatum, and the salamus. And for each voxel, we only keep the search retains the highest return. That is one of the 80 uh, injection sites. And, and then we color that voxel together with the streamlines to the color of that injection site. So this uh, picture basically shows you the primary path between the cortical to subcortical connections. And uh, instead of uh, just keeps the highest return. On the opposite, uh, we also provide the user another, uh, another viewer called a composite projection viewer. So in this viewer, the user is, about, uh, is able to use a dot O gram to see the projection signal from different, in, uh, from different experiment at the same time. So, um, at the end of the introduction to our uh, connectional atlas, I want to show you this uh, scientific art generated by the Brain Explorer, our interactive 3D viewer. So we selected 21 well-tapped injections, which spanning the whole cortex. And uh, 
Besides the asto uh, astonishing beauty, we can also find some very in interesting scientific findings. For example, as you can see, all the signal injected to the right side of the brain projected to the other side in a very precise way, except in the uh, primary visual area. You see the spas uh, sparseness here, right? So if we increase the number of the injections, this, this sparseness can actually show you the V1 area. So this is quite similar to the clo uh, colossal labeling method. So this can be called as a virtual colossal labeling. Another, another example to show uh, of uh, using a CC app to do the data integration is the Allen cell type database. It's a database of uh, single cells characterized by its uh, morph uh, morphology and uh, electrophysiology properties. So this is the portal page of that uh, database. And uh, the backdrop image of the map is the top surface view of the CCF. Uh, with the afterline showing the uh, primary uh, visual area. And here, each dot represents one cell. And the two strips to the bottom and the right side is, uh, can be viewed as a flattened uh, cortex, so which shows the depth of the cell. So when the user moves their uh, mouse around this navigation map, the cell will highlight itself. If the user click that cell, the cell will be bring to the top of the list on the right side. And from there, user can see uh, more detailed information about that cell. So how we managed to uh, map each cell into the CCF? So this is a diagram of this pipeline. So uh, for each brain, we generate we generated three types of the image. So uh, first, for each cell around its location, we have about uh, 12 coronal sections to form a partial brain, which bring us the anatomical context of that cell. And then we get the morphology information from the 60X3 image. Um, and then we also use the 20X image as a bridge. Oh. I think here we have some problem. We cannot see the 20x image here. OK. So um, 20, 20x image is, uh, is something between the, between the BI5 image and the 63x image. It just shows the half of the brain. So we use that as a bridge to link between these uh, two kind of image. And uh, we, we first connect these two images using the stage co coordinates. And then the, the information loop is completed by two image registration. So we finally bring the uh, cell under investigation into the CCF. So with this map, we can uh, register each of the cell into the CCF. Like uh, this image shows you, uh, it shows 76 cells mapped to CCF, and uh, as we know that, the laminar, laminar information or the l location of the cell plays a very important role in understanding the different type of cells. So now with this transform, we have a way to quantitatively compare them and uh, have an intuitively way to see them. OK, at the last, uh, I would like to uh, thank all the contributors to this project because this is really a big science approach. Uh, actually, this all kinds of uh, image goes everybody in this image. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Exciting news on the Atlas in front here. So, questions? <laughs> yes. Please. Um, so, uh, at some point, you mentioned that the boundaries needs to be uh, distinct, but based on the gene expression patterns. So uh, what do you think it would reveal something new? Because there could be a similar regional expression, uh, regional regions that would have different expression patterns, right? I, I think, uh, so, so 
you know, the gene expression and the connect, uh, connectivity data is, is just used as a, a supplementary information to decide the boundary. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, I, I think that part is doing by a, a, a group of the neural anatomists. Uh, but uh, I think their idea is trying to merge all this kind of information to, to, to make the final decision. Mm -hmm. so, um, so it's correct, probably they can have different uh, expressions. But uh, I think they will use their experience to the, make the final decisions. That's my understanding. But if you want more details about this information, I think you are more than welcome to send just, uh, send just an email to our institute. Yeah, yeah somebody okay. probably will help you. Okay. Thanks yeah. a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. Catherine? Mm -hmm. My question goes into a little bit the same direction. So different modalities may, may uh, result in different segregational principles. So do, do you have developed tools to compare uh, different parcellation schemes? And, and at the end, how, how do you define uh, what uh, a cortical areas is? I mean, this cannot be simply a, a majority uh, as a decision at the end, uh, but uh, what are the underlying principles? So are you going into this direction or do you, um, do you simply provide hydroarchitectonic parcellations, gene expression patterns, X, Y, Z, and so on? Or do you really try also to, to come up with a, with a new parcellation of the mouse? Even in the mouse, we have different competing parcellation schemes uh, with respect to different groups in the world. So, so how do you handle it? So, uh, sorry, uh, c can you uh, clarify your question? So your question is about uh, uh, using this CCF as a way to integrate data, then we can compare them, or your question is more about uh, how we do the annotation about, uh, about this uh, average template. It, it includes both. So the first mm -hmm. question is, do you have developed also tools that allow you to superimpose connectivity-based parcellations with those obtained in gene expression, with those obtained in nissel staining. So this is the first. We have a way to visualize different parcellation schemes in your template space. And if you would be able, how do you decide then how to label? Yeah, I think uh, currently um, uh, within our institute, we already, already have some tools to allow the uh, neural anatomists to overlay this kind of data, otherwise they cannot do their uh, annotation work. Uh, for the other part, uh, in the future, whether we can use this data set to, to map all the, use this uh, CCF to, to map all the other uh, modality data into it and have a way, uh, have an overlapping tool uh, provided to more, uh, uh, to more uh, users, uh, probably. I, I don't know. Hmm. Maybe another way of asking the same question or could be relevant is uh, the sharing of the, the template that you are preparing. Because the, the past generation template was fully shared, which was very helpful. Will this happen again with this new uh, probabilistic and uh, version that you have shown us? Will it be shown in full, uh, shared fully with the community? Yes, currently uh, in our latest uh, release, data release in the, uh, let's say the May, uh, May release, this year, uh, th this average template has been released. So if you want to use that, you can just uh, go to our website. Uh, that there is a section called API, then yeah. you can download this uh, you can average download template. It, yes. yeah. Because then you can start dealing yeah. with the questions that Katrina is yeah. asking, which probably will have happened many places with different scientists, and then we need some other infrastructures to solve the problem, perhaps. Yeah, uh, yeah there are several questions over there. <laughs> Does Alan Brain have a plan to handle the breakdown of homology? So my question is around, at some stage, coordinate systems just won't work as we go smaller and smaller because an organisation of neurons won't match function. So at the MRI scale, we assume structure, structure organisation equals function. And we can't assume that once we get to low histology levels. So what do you think you're going to do with coordinate systems then? I mean, to the lower level? Yes, yeah, so, I mean, we can keep making these atlases finer and finer and finer, mm -hmm. and you showed overlay of neurons from different 
animals, but their location with respect to them being next to each other doesn't mean much at that scale. But at a larger scale, it does mean something. So how do you think coordinate systems will handle that? Uh, I think this is a really good uh, question because uh, just as a map, uh, sometimes we really need a detailed map in some certain areas. So for example, uh, because our uh, research is going to focus on the visual system, so uh, in our plan, we are going to have a more det detailed map. That means a more detailed annotation about the higher visual area in particular. Yeah, that's, that's in our plan, yeah. So the final question, if there was one more, and then we'll have to move on. Yeah, sorry, just a, a basic question. So when you are building up your template, do you need to um, to make it just on one, for example, one gender and one age group, or are these characteristics not that relevant to have like different brain templates? Because otherwise, don't you have the risk of making up a template that has got some average characteristics that don't fit any any subject? I mean, because just to make like a very simple example, if you got, I don't know, people that are 160 centimeters high and 108, then you got an average on 170, but no one is, um, it might, I mean, if you got male and females, uh, so no one is 170, but you got different characteristics. Yes, I think if you uh, want a more specific answer, just as you mentioned, uh, you want a different sex, you want uh, even different um, uh, disease models, atlas, that's, that's possible. So you, you need to change your population you use to, to build your atlas. Did I answer your question? Okay, so then. Okay, thank you very much again. Okay, thanks.